Well, hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, for the vast majority of us, the engine behind a happy, fulfilling life is having enough in the bank to live on. <laughs> um, you know, that's put kind of crass way to put it, but uh, it's about money. It's not uh, something that many of us really talk about too much unless, you know, we don't have enough or we have so much we love to, to share that fact with others. So that puts most of us, oh, maybe somewhere in the middle. Even here at Bloomer Boomer, you know, we don't talk too much about money, partly because it's something uh, most of us, uh, well, we know about, but we don't have enough of it. So today we're going to talk about money with someone who has a little different angle on the topic. Instead of a college degree in finance, like many money managers, our guest majored in psychology. Now that is a big difference right there because, you know, many money problems begin right here in our head. Now, maybe we can, uh, he can help us with that. Our guest is Bo Henderson. He begins with a kind of a very sad story, actually, yet a very compelling story about what got him onto the subject of money. It's about losing his father at a young age and his family in a financial crisis as a result. Author and speaker, Bo Henderson, he has a book, The Rich Life, 10 Investments for True Wealth, We'll talk to Bo in just a moment. First, though, let me get a plug into bloomerboomer.com. You know, it is about life after 50. Uh, join us and the millions of others who are discovering great ways to thrive and embrace life. Subscribe to the newsletter, our YouTube channel, and our lively Facebook page. Live events around the country and other really cool things. So check us out. We'll be right back with Bo Henderson right after this. Our guest is author and speaker, Bo Henderson. He has a book, The Rich Life, 10 Investments for True Wealth. Bo, thank you for joining us. Hey, Andy, I'm excited to be here talking about some of my favorite topics here. We talk about um, creating and living a successful retirement. I couldn't be more thrilled. Well, you know, that is, that's music to my ears. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, sometimes talking about money and retirement it leaves a lot of us uh, not real comfortable now uh, because we don't have enough of it in many cases. Now, I was saying earlier, other than amongst our family and friends, uh, no one talks too much about money, but there are a lot of financial folks like you out there who are talking about it all the time. Now, you sound like you're coming from a, a different perspective, uh, but all the other financial gurus are saying the same thing. Start saving early, don't touch that money, and be frugal about it. And uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, wise advice uh, that I actually got way back from my first grade teacher. So uh, what's there to learn? Because what I learned in grammar school is basically no different uh, than from today. And by the way, learning something and actually doing it are two very different things. Oh, that, that's so true. And, you know, it, it is important. And I never want to want to minimize the financial aspect because we all have to deal with money. And in retirement, it really comes down to being a cash flow game. Do we have enough coming in to cover what we have going out? And if we can do the planning or the strategy of having the right amounts for income, the right amounts for liquidity and the right amounts for growth, that ratio is going to be different for every single person in every single situation. But if we can get that ratio dialed in correctly for you, your situation, your family, your goals and your objectives, then financially you're going to be successful in retirement. But what I found, Andy, is is the financial component is only half of the picture. And that's a lot of what uh, we talked about uh, earlier in that sometimes we need to actually do some planning and transitioning into the things we might not expect as we go into retirement. And it's uh, you know like a, a, a head issue in many cases, uh, wrapping our head around it all. And uh, you've probably seen the data, something like uh, one in three Americans has saved zero dollars for retirement. Yeah, it's, it's you know, in, in the percentage over 50%, the bulk of their money is coming from Social Security. And if you know what the average Social Security is, for most people, that's not enough for a lifestyle. The average person in the U.S., doesn't start saving for retirement until they're 53 years old. Oh boy, I didn't know it was that hot, that old. Yeah, and it makes sense if you think about it. We get busy raising a family, working on our career, and then one day we wake up and we're like, oh crap, I've got five years left, 10 years left, and we have to get busy. 
Yeah, you know, and saving for retirement is not an area of financial strength for most of us. You know, too often meeting the financial demands of today means delaying, diminishing, or simply never starting to save for tomorrow. And there are plenty of obstacles that uh, we claim are in our way when it comes to saving for retirement. You know, there's credit card debt, there's student loan debt, low wages, the need to save for child's college education. You know, that list just is, it goes on and on actually. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that I can, I can share with our viewers here is I found that one out of 20 people that came through our door, we surveyed a thousand people, one out of 20 actually knew their numbers. They knew what was coming in, what was going out, and they actually had a strategy to move towards where they want to go to. So I guess it comes down to clarity, where you are now, where you want to go. If we could do any one thing, it's to have a strategy now. Don't wait till it seems like um, we have to, or we're in retirement. Now let's figure it out. Is if, if we look at that question, do I have a strategy that I understand and I'm comfortable with? If the answer is no, that should be first on your checklist to work on. Yeah, yeah, that uh, really makes sense. And uh, uh, you, you can have a strategy. I, I suppose somewhere in that strategy, there has to be a little space uh, for when the road takes a turn that you didn't strategize for. Oh, flexibility is key. And that's one thing. The longer I've done this 16 years now is that we're dealing with two things. We're when we're dealing with people and we're dealing with life, things aren't going to work out exactly the way we plan. And the downfall of a lot of situations is being too rigid. And when things don't work out, you just quit or give up or don't stick with something. So, so flexibility is key. Cause one thing I know is life's going to happen. Yeah. So true. So true. Now, and you know, there are a lot of other uh, financial experts out there and they publish books and they get on shows like this to help build their credibility and build their client list. Now that doesn't sound like what you're doing. Am I right? You're more of, of a, a person who uh, wants to write and share information about savings and investing. Now I'm fascinated. The, the behavior fascinates me. The, the things that lead to true success in retirement really fascinate me because these are the conversations I've been having week in and week out for years. And I saw a disconnect all the attention, all the all the information is pretty much on that financial part, getting the money right. What investments do I do? But what I realized is, is it really, the best word I have is disconnect is um, you see an ad or a magazine ad and you've got a lady on a yacht with her hair blowing in the wind and she's retired and everything's beautiful. But sometimes that's not the reality for a lot of people. And if we don't plan on some of the, the transitions, the important transitions that happen, um, it can be disappointing. There's a dark side of retirement that people don't talk a lot about, but the increased rates of suicide, divorce, um, isolation, depression, all those things come if there's not, uh, if they're not talked about. So I don't want to sound real negative and, and scare folks with those, with those statistics, but they're conversations we need to have. Yeah. And I think what I was suggesting earlier, it's, it starts in our head, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm. something that it, it's, it's a hard one to, uh, to grasp and it's a difficult one to discuss uh, with the people who are meaningful around you. Um, you know, so hey Bo, you, you had a, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry about the, the story about uh, you and your father who he died at 49 when you were just uh, 18 and I guess it left your mother and family in some pretty dire straits. Tell us what that was like. Well, when dad passed away, mom who had been married to him since she was 18 years old, uh, was just kind of in a fog for a couple of years. She was just somewhat out of it. And my dad had worked most of his life very hard building a small business. And we had a, he had a couple pieces of real estate. And before I was going to graduate school to become a psychologist, it's funny how my path changed right here. Um, I came home to help mom working through the business, what to do with the business, what to do with the, with the money. And I really immersed myself in this financial uh, world and this financial planning and what really immediately jumped out to me. And of course it's evolved as I learn over the years, but if, if there's not somebody that truly cares and will help somebody navigate these kind of things as they come up, there's 10 people out there that'll show up to take advantage of them. And I guess that's really the start of my track changing to, you know what, I can help people. I can be a resource to people. Um, and I can do it around helping them with money and, uh, wasn't quite the burnout profession that I was already starting to see in the mental health area. If I'm not mistaken, you kind of take a little different approach to uh, 
uh, funding kids' education and all that. Yeah, this this creates passion on both sides of the argument. When it comes to funding a college education, I find parents are against, are for it or against it uh, for a couple of reasons. When when there's a parent that wants to pay for education, it usually comes from either their parents paid for theirs and they feel it's like the duty and what they should do to pay it forward or their parents didn't and because of how hard it was for them to work through or maybe they didn't go to school, they, they want to do that for their kids. But my stance is this is yes, if you can afford to and you choose to help your kids, but never, ever, ever pay out money that's going to sacrifice you having a having enough money to be able to retire successfully because what happens there is being you're rationalizing yes i'm doing this for a noble reason to take care of my kids but you're putting yourself at risk to actually be a burden on your kid later on by not taking care of your retirement and, and it's the thing i can finance a college education right i can even finance a house if we need to but i can't finance your retirement once the time is gone it's gone. And, um, you know, and I know, and you also talk about uh, why retiring later is not really a reliable strategy. And there's, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how uh, baby boomers will actually need to work later in life, um, which seems like the case. Well, we're living longer and, and the definition somewhat changed in that when you look at the, the data or the research, there's a higher percentage of people that say they're going to work longer. There's just a disconnect. Again, there's that word. There's a disconnect between what people want to do and what actually happens in a lot of cases. And, you know, there's things outside of our control that we've got to have that. We talked about flexibility earlier is what happens when there's a health issue that could change the plan. What happens when the company gets bought and they, they go through rounds of layoffs that could change the plan. So even though, uh, as a whole, people are realizing they're going to need, they're going to have a longer retirement, span to cover and working later seems like a good option. What I see more often than not, Andy, is people maybe leaving the job they did and doing something once they realize, you know what, I need to make $1,500 a month, not five or 6,000, whatever. Um, and they find something they enjoy doing and they do some part-time work in retirement to make it work. Yeah, uh, that, that, that seems like a good solution. And uh, both something I like to ask as we wind down here for folks who, um, who, you know, hopefully will pick up your book and, and, and listen to your podcast and so forth. But for folks who can take something away, uh, who are looking at uh, what the next step is, and most of our audience are going to be people, people over 50, what might they, what might you tell them? You know, if I could, could leave one takeaway, it would be, let's, let's get, let's think about what is our retirement identity. And, and what I mean by that is, a lot of times in our career and our work, that that is a lot of our identity. I had a guy I talked with a couple of weeks ago who was a pilot for Delta. He said, Bo, when I walked down the terminal, people parted ways. He had a lot of uh, authority and, and just a lot of uh, uh, self-worth wrapped up in his identity. When he retired, he became very depressed because he lost that. So what we can do is think about, okay, this is who I was in my working years. Who am I in my retirement years? Am I the volunteer? Am I the person that takes care of their grandkids? Am I the author? Am I the guy that starts the new business? Start working and thinking about that new identity and it'll make that transition often um, a lot smoother and we can avoid some of those things like isolation and depression that do happen. Well, that's good. And, and again, it goes along with, with your message, I think. Uh, well, you need to know the numbers. I think it's, uh, it's you got to start some of it right in your head and, 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 and be comfortable with that. That's right. If you can, if you can both get a plan for the financial and the mental emotional side of retirement, you're ahead of most people. And that's what could truly set you up for a successful, happy, fulfilling retirement. Well, good, good advice. Uh, hey, Bo, thanks for joining us. Hey, I appreciate it, Andy. Anytime. Our guest is Bo Henderson. His book, The Rich Life, 10 Investments for True Wealth. We'll be right back. Well, I hope you like the show. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. We have other shows coming up with some amazing guests. So like us on Facebook and visit us at bloomerboomer.com. Until next time, so long. <laughs>